And now we're going to go from a spiritual awakening and we're going to talk about, but I want both. The Working Mom's Guide to Creating a Life She Loves, Nina Sossaman Pogue. Book number two also. Congratulations and welcome to- Thank you, Ramses. Appreciate it. I'm very excited to be here. Love that. I just, I, I want to ask you to dive right in, but I want okay. both. <laughs> but I'll just dive right in. Yeah. Um, but I want both. Um, what is Wait, first I'm gonna say, what am I, a pirate? I have one earring on and I didn't realize it till just now. I'm gonna take this off. Like, that's a thing? Okay. There you go. We want both. And who did you write this book for? What is your book about? I wrote this book for all the hardworking, really smart and um, aggressive women who work hard at their careers and then get to a point in their life where they feel like they have to give up their career to be a good parent. So this is for all the hardworking moms out there who really don't want to give up their career and want to find out how they can do it both. So throughout my career, so I, I, was, a, I was an athlete when I was young, and then I was in television for 20 years, and then I've been in tech for 12 years, uh, an executive role in a technology company. And I have met so many young women, and they uh, would come to me often and ask me, you know, how do you do it all. And that's one of those questions that you really don't do it all. There's no such thing as work-life balance. We all figure it out for ourselves. But there's a lot of stories that I told and books I would tell them to read and things I would tell them to think of that would help them. And uh, thank goodness for the author incubator because you guys helped me organize all those thoughts and put it in something that I can hand to them and uh, help them through this process. So they can quit beating themselves up and go be awesome. I love that. And, you know, we... I want to ask something a little risque, but it's about the, you know, a woman's role and maybe like in a masculine culture, right? Is this a kind of woman you, that would benefit from your book that would say, now I have to put up with appearances, not only be the wife, but also be the mom, but also be super in your masculine to be competitive or be taken seriously. Could you speak about that? It's all in there, yes. So part of what's a challenge right now is the generation, I start off the book with this, the generation before us could, mm -hmm. you know, my mother could be a, a doctor or, I mean, could, I'm sorry, could be a nurse or a teacher. And then now as little girls, we're told we can be anything. But then as we get older and we become these working women who find success and have big management roles or become an executive, we have the challenge of now who's going to do all the other stuff that was being done. So we really have a generation who's been trying to figure this out. And this book is passed on to the next generation because you do have to be in a man's world, but you've got to be very careful about what you say. We, we saw Kamala Harris do that fence just recently. Um, brilliantly, by yep. the way, we, we have a whole generation of women who are very bright and who are trying very hard to be all that they can be, but do see barriers there. So this book takes you through what exactly does success look like for you? Because we're all different. And then how do you navigate some of that? So the parenting piece, because now, I mean, my husband did a lot of the cooking and a lot of the parenting and he helped with the homework or I got other people to help with those things. It didn't make me a bad parent. Um, my right. kids did fine. I did fine. I kind of share those lessons throughout there, how you can hand things off and work with someone. I talk about your value at work. How do you step into a boardroom and command attention and be an equal at the table? And I talk about finding your talents and you know, people say, well, what are your talents? It takes a, a little bit of introspection to figure out what those are. So I take them through a process of let's just find where you're a rock star. What is your superpower? We've all got superpowers. Um, and then I go through and talk about resilience, you know, kind of tapping into my first book on, on resilience and how you keep going even when things get difficult. Uh, and then I talk about, you know, the clock ticking and time and how you can look at your life. Um, and I do some math and sort of geek out a little bit on the math and the fractions of time that we're all going through and how we look at time. Uh, and then I go through um, changes and choice management. And this is kind of fun. I take them through um, just like if you were in a big company, especially a tech company, when there's a big transition or an acquisition or something, you go through a change management process and there's a whole like month long process. You know this, you were in this world. There's month long processes for change management. So I actually took that as a as an individual and said, okay, you are the CEO of you. Let's go through change management. Let's look at your messaging. Let's look at all your, what you have available to you. What needs work? What doesn't? Where do we need to spend more time? Who do we need to maybe put in a different role? <laughs> so I look at it from that 
uh, perspective as well. So it's a little bit of all of that. But yes, there is definitely a new generation of women who really don't want to give up their careers and want to have great success, but do have great pressures at home and pressures that I didn't even even have when I was um, having kids. There was no Instagram parties. I could wing it. Nobody was looking at my Facebook pictures to see how my parties looked and stuff. There's a whole new level of pressure to be this great parent. Yeah, I could imagine. And, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but if this, if there was a specific generation you may have been addressing with this, does, is, does one come to mind? Uh, this is the millennial, mostly the millennials and Gen Zs. There's about five women who I've worked and mentored, worked with and mentored. They worked with me um, or worked for me, however you want to put that. We always say with who I've mentored and I actually took their faces with their cute little families and I put them on my board and they were my muses as I worked on this book. Wow. And their stories I had told them, their things, challenges they had shared with me. Um, and these are women who now are in their young, like 30 to 35 in there and they have their, their life taking off, their career taking off and success at the same time they're being asked to do so much more at home. And then how do you balance that? You feel like you want to do it all, but you're doing none of it right. You know, and, and so that is, that is who this book is for. And uh, I think there's so many young women out there who can relate to it and young men. That's not really gender specific. If you want to have success in your career and be a good parent at the same time, the book is for you. I use mom because that's my audience, but it would really help anyone who's trying to be yeah. successful. I also talk about looking at your um career or your job uh, as, as, you're, as if you're an athlete and you're training, you know, that constant training that you have. I love that. That's very, very, very powerful. And so you mentioned something a little bit earlier about, well, we actually don't do it all often, those who figured it out. Um, in what ways did this program, this process help you write this second book? It, it really was. The first book was very cathartic for me. It was very deep and it's a much heavier book sort of your, you know, don't let the world beat you anti-suicide book. This one is much more, let me show you how you have great success. And I could not have done this, either one of the books, but especially this one, without the author incubator. One, because we're in the middle of a pandemic and a political season and my brain is so many other places. But right. what this, this group, you and your amazing folks there did for me, um, is help me organize my thoughts. You know, mm -hmm. you have such a great process. It's real simple to kind of, you know, it, it's like almost doing homework. And I like to have checklists and check things off. So people like me do really well, I think, in programs like this, because you're handing it to me and going, think about this, write this, organize these thoughts this way. Um, and so I really think that that was a big part of it. And I talk about some of that in the book too. I pass that along, uh, some of those learnings in this book about how we can organize our thoughts and get the most out of what we're doing. And I truly believe, and your program is a perfect, perfect example of this, that a high tide raises all ships and we need to help each other. So this is my effort to help the generation that's coming up behind me just like you guys are, are there to help all of these writers who are coming up after you who have already written some things. Um, in my foreword for my book, the, the Who It's To, I don't know if I'll get it exactly right, but I said, this book was inspired, uh, this book began with all of the working moms playing the game of life. And it was written by all the working moms playing Super Mario Brothers who found the cheat codes and we're handing it off to everybody who's playing Call of Duty right now and still in the game. I love that. That's you really are speaking to the millennial generation. Yeah, so that's, that is what that it is really written for them. And it's funny and it's, you know, snarky in parts, but it's practical stuff you can sit down and do and help you get to the, you know, get to a place where you can see what a successful life looks like. The success for you may be different than success for me. Like I'm fine that I had one earring in. I'm fine that if I go to bed without my dishes done, but other people, that's not success for them. So I help people figure out what does their success feel like. I love that. I love that. Let's see that cover if you do have it. Um, this is, you're seeing it here first, folks, uh, is But I Want Both, The Working Mom's Guide to Creating a Life She Loves. Nina, it's been such a pleasure. Thank if you good to see you. For how to succeed, how to get the career going, how to do both, have your cake and eat it too. If you want to get Nina's book for free right now for a limited time, Go ahead and download it. Nina, it's been such a wonderful experience here. Great to see you. It's been a wonderful experience for the two years I've been with the Author Incubator working on these things too. Cannot say enough good things. Oh, I love that.